Hello everybody, it is me, Lisa, the love coach here. It is five o'clock, it's time for the quarantini. Happy hour, and I'm actually empty. This is bad, this is bad, but you know what, all good. Um, I have an amazing, amazing little episode for you today. Something came my way from my website. I have um, a free love life assessment that I offer over at lovequestcoaching.com. If you haven't had the chance to go fill that out and get your free love life assessment, I want to invite you to go on over to lovequestcoaching.com. There you will see a button that says free love life assessment and you can go there and fill that out and get your questions answered from me to you. That said, this little chickie pea found me on YouTube. She's only 21 years old and she was searching around looking for answers for a dilemma that she has in her life, which basically is she's thinking about being single after a three and a half year relationship, her first real serious adult relationship. And she tells me that she thought this guy was the love of her life. She met him, she was, you know, 18, and now she's 21, and she's like, I don't know if I'm feeling it. So now she says he's the first person she's ever been in a relationship with and loves him very, very much. The last year, however, has been really rocky for her. She keeps feeling like, I want to be single, she says, and I was starting to get really confused about the relationship, and in the last six months, she says she connected with somebody else. She was completely by accident. She didn't mean to do this on purpose, nothing. But she can't deny the connection with the new person. Doesn't even know that she has a boyfriend. So she's seeing this guy, seeing this guy, being 21, you know. It's what you do when you're 21. Lord knows I was there. And she's very lost, though. She's stressed out about it. Lost and confused about what to do. And she's afraid of hurting both of them. So I ask her in the love life assessment, what patterns do you see in your love life? Anything that happens over and over? And she says, within her 30 year long relationship, she's gone through many moments of uncertainty. She's always overthinking. She starts doubting herself, feeling claustrophobic in the relationship. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm not topless, you pig. <laughs> That's a funny comment though. Um. And so she says she doubts herself in the relationship over and over and over, right? So this is like stressing her out. So I asked her in the assessment, what are the three questions that you want answers to regarding your love life? So she says, am I doing the right thing breaking up a long-term relationship just to explore new things? Am I being rational or am I actually overthinking? Is this what I'm feeling real? Or is it stemming from another issue? Very wise little girl, 21 years old, asking all the right questions. I wish some people older than her who seek me out for coaching would ask more of these questions of themselves. But good for her. She's doing her work. She's doing the thing that she needs to do, which is get to the root of what's going on in her love life. So... She wants to feel fun, relaxed, and close in her relationships. And she says that her need, this is the important part, she says that her need to keep everyone happy, not doing anything about how I'm feeling, how she's feeling, just for the sake of somebody else's feelings. So she is basically sacrificing how she feels for herself, what she needs for herself, which she's leaning towards, I need to be single, I feel I need to be single, for the sake of not hurting someone. Meanwhile, she's seeing two people at once. Everyone's going to get hurt, mainly her. Christian comes back and says, I am a pig. Until this is all over, I'm not going to look for someone, but doing a lot of working on myself. Amazing. Good for you. Cheers to everyone who's putting their dating life on hold because they're using the coronavirus to 100% go inward and work on themselves. So... Moving along with Miss um, B Missy Little P over here, lovely Camilla, age 21, working on some stuff. She's the people pleaser and she's overthinking. Three years and six months in a relationship, she says that she's learned a lot about how to treat another person. And then she's learned a lot about herself and her bad habits. 
Her personal goals, she wants to improve her ability to self-motivate and get stuff done. Who can relate? Little Camilla. She's ambitious. I love it. She wants to go after what she wants without overthinking and doubting every step. Girlfriend, I can relate to you, precious little thing, 21 years old. So here's the advice that I give to Miss Camilla, the guidance that I give to Miss Camilla. And again, if you go and fill out the love, um, the assessment, the free love life assessment over at lovequestcoaching.com for free, you just like little Miss Camilla can fill it out, get clarity and answers to what it is that you're going through, right? So here it goes, Miss Camilla, lovely. I am so glad that you found me on YouTube. I received your love life assessment form and I read it through. Here are some insights that I can offer based on what you shared with me and the next step that you can take if you are inspired to do so. Let's roll. First, when our inner being calls us elsewhere and we don't go, we feel awful. This is what causes all the stress. Your overthinking is interfering with your growth and your expansion. You're 21, my love, and you're not married. You're dating and you're just learning about yourself. There will be at least three more serious relationships for you to have the beauty of learning from before you manifest the man that you will be with long term. If that even becomes your desire, you might be single and realize, oh my God, I want to travel to all the continents before I'm 30. I want to work. I want to study abroad. Whatever. You're going to figure it out. But 21, no place to be having pressures on yourself about relationships and these two men. If I were you, my love, here's what I would do. I would turn the focus more on what you're meant to do in service to others, what lights you up inside regardless of what guy you're with, and envision your life at 30 and what is that ideal life like. What are you doing? Who are you with? How much money do you have? Where are you earning your money? What have you seen and have you done in your 20s? And then reverse it. Think of the ideal life that you want and then work it backwards and start taking small steps every day to create it. What you are experiencing, my love, at 21 is normal. You're outgrowing your first serious boyfriend. People outgrow one another in relationships all the time. It's totally normal. Think about it. Did you think that this boyfriend, 21 years old, precious little peanut, was going to be the hand that you hold when you die at 90? I agree, Christian, 21 years old, too young to worry about that. Just like you said, look forward to learning some stuff from you. I do too, honey, you and I are gonna connect for sure. Happy coronavirus, happy quarantini to you. You can love someone and still outgrow them and feel a deep calling forward in your life's path without them. There's nothing wrong with this. You're not a failure for leaving a relationship. So this is the thing to connect with, right? Even though she's 21 years old, and this is advice for a 21-year-old, but for all the women out there and the men out there who are in relationships and you really know in the pit of your heart that you should have been out of this thing two years ago and you're in it too deep now, and you think that it's like a bad stock, that you want to stay with the stock to see if it turns around, honey, no, you're wasting time in your life. Now, if you're in a marriage and you made vows and there isn't anything toxic happening or any abuse, there's none of that, there's just a disconnect, then yes, you owe it to both of yourselves to sort out what that is. And all that is is a disconnection. You both are disconnected. If there's abuse, if there's alcoholism, any kind of addiction, any kind of anything that is causing stress, a lack of health to the relationship, even harm, danger and harm, got to get out of there. Got to get out of there. As far as the new guy that this girl started to hang out with, so now she's hanging out with a guy six months. She's in a relationship with someone else for three and a half. And I tell her, the new guy did nothing but awaken you. This doesn't mean that you leave the old boyfriend for the new boyfriend. It does mean, however, that you need to be single for a bit to connect with yourself. This new guy just woke you up 
to the idea of more, of wanting more. Leapfrogging from one relationship to the next is the path to codependency. I have been there, that was my track record all through my life. I did not break up with someone until I had someone else already in the bullpen waiting to be called to be with me. So I was like, that girl, serial monogamy incredibly codependent. Why? Because you never know. I never learned how to stand on my own, how to be completely on my own. Never had that. I was always somebody's girlfriend and then someone's fiance and then somebody's wife. I never just had time to be Lisa until I was 44 years old. Now, fast forward five years later, I'm in a happy relationship. I had the time to be on my own. There is power in being on your own. If you people are in the quarantine and you are not using this time to revel in your solitude and really assess your relationship patterns and what it is that you're doing in your relationships and making an effort to change that, do not squander this time. Do not squander this time. I'm actually offering a 90 minute, nine zero minute. It's amazing. People are kicking ass with this thing. During the quarantine, they're getting on a call just like this and they are handling their bullshit patterns that they want done with. They were like, Lise, before quarantine, this is how I was dating. It was a disaster. And then they describe all their habits, all their crap. And they said, I am committed to handling this, to handling whatever it was inside of me that had me dating like this crazy person. I want to get it handled and sorted so that when this coronavirus goes bye-bye, I can re-emerge into dating from a position of power and clarity and strength. So if this sounds like something that you're into, right, this is the time to do it. It's not when the quarantine is over, let me do it. No, this is, you must prepare. What are you going to do? The quarantine could end in six weeks. Really? You're going to hang out and do nothing for six weeks? No. So back to Miss Camilla. If you feel called to be free, it means that there is something better, expansion, more calling for you. When you don't see what that more is, you feel terrible. Have faith. Everything goes back to having faith. When you tap into your faith, what you deeply know to be true inside of you, the answer is always clear. Get out of your head and the overthinking and connect with your heart space, what you know to be true in your heart, and you will feel your way to your answer with your gut, your gut instincts. Never leads you wrong. But a lot of people are disconnected. They don't even, they can't even listen to themselves. They're like, I don't know what I would do. And because they're, and, and, they're in their heads, they're not in their hearts. It's like, what do you feel? What do you feel is the right thing to do? I don't know. And then they freak out and they do nothing and they stay stuck. You are a people pleaser, and so you need to nip that in the bud fast. It comes from your parents and their expectations, which led to a false story. Many adults are still telling this story. That says, to get love and survive, I have to be good, which means pleasing others and doing what they say, regardless of how I feel. So when you say, and you have a belief, People pleasers, this is the belief they have. They live their life in the world believing that in order for them to get love, approval, validation, and worthiness, they have to please others. Love is earned. Very codependent mindset. You are conditioned to believe that your feelings were either a burden, irrelevant, or worse, wrong. A lot of people who are as little kids made to feel that their feelings were not relevant that they just had to go along with the flow, that they didn't have time or any kind of um, nourishment, acknowledgement when they were sad, scared, afraid, hungry, thirsty, nothing. It was, come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. That come on, let's go type of parenting style where the kid doesn't have a second to be heard and acknowledged for feeling whatever it feels. So it detaches from its feelings. And that's where you get codependent. You start looking to other people to determine how you feel. I am so happy that she came to me at 21 with this and not 44. Because most people that I coach, they are between 35 and 55, sometimes 60. 
And uh, yeah, this is the stuff that this little girl gets to learn now at 21. So she learned very early on in life that pleasing others gets you love, I said to her. This, my love, is a myth. It's a myth. And it's a blessing to come at this at the age that you are. Another possibility that I see many people in their 20s dealing with, right? So if you're out there and you're watching and you have a kid who's in their 20s or you have a niece or a nephew, something, this is something that I'm seeing a lot. People in their 20s are having trouble stepping into their autonomy and away from overly involved parents. Parents who think for their kids create adult children who doubt their own ability to think for themselves. They are so used to numbing themselves to agreement with what their parents think is best for them that when they enter relationships as adults in life, they don't have any inner guidance of their own. Their parents thought for them, planned their play dates for them, planned their schedules, did everything, everything. And now these kids are in their 20s and they're like, wait, I, I have to figure this all out by myself. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know. And they're looking at life like a deer in headlights because their parents were hyper involved growing up and now they don't know what to do with themselves. So they end up reaching out to people like me. And interestingly, I'm typically the age of their parents. So I've had people who come and coach with me and they're in their mid twenties and their moms are like 52 and I'm 49. So I'm like, girl, I'm your mom's age. Like I know exactly what's going on with that generation. So I can give you some perspective. So I advised her, you know, that one of the many characteristics of codependency is sacrificing the self for the happiness of others. It leads to a disconnection between you and your deeper inner being, the part of us that's God force, that really just knows instinctively what to do. When we're disconnected and we get into our heads, we leave behind our gut and then life becomes really hard. Is you're operating too much in your head, not enough what you're feeling, and you're a little wobbly and disconnected. Also, people pleasers often struggle to self-motivate because first, all people pleasing drains energy. The people pleasing, it drains energy. So of course, you're not going to be motivated to do anything. The second reason that they, it's that they're disconnected from themselves. They're not motivated because they can't even figure out what it is they want to do with their lives. They've had mom and dad thinking about it for them. Or whomever, if you're a codependent, honey, you've had the other person running the show in your life your entire time. You don't even know what you feel anymore. Finally, people who are often people pleasers and codependents, they don't trust themselves. They do not trust their own judgment. And they don't trust themselves to be right. They're looking for everyone else to judge them as good and right as opposed to really knowing what is right for them. So this is where she has a great opportunity. She gets to decide the life that she wants and then take the steps along that road, along that path to become that person. And that's how you end up building trust in yourself. When you have a vision for yourself and every day you know you're doing little things to march towards that vision of yourself while being happy in the now, going for what's down the line, you feel empowered. You feel like, wow, like I really trust my judgment. I really feel like I know best for myself what I need to do, whether it's professionally, in relationships, you really start to trust your gut and to really be with yourself and learn how to go inward to find those answers. So my loves, this is what I do, right? So if all of this is resonating or if you have an issue in your relationships, your love life, you're stuck somewhere, something's going on, there's a funk, there's something up. You're like, I wanna go over there and I can't because I'm blocking myself. Connect with me. I'm doing a wonderful 90 minute hanging out, you and me. It goes fast and you get clarity on exactly those things that you think are blocking you. If you don't even know what's blocking you, we figure it out. It doesn't take very long. And then you get the tools to handle it. So if you're interested in that, drop me a DM, hit me with a like and a, and a heart and flowers and, and, you know, Uber Eats, whatever you want to send my way, I'm receiving it all with love. And if you want to have information about my confidence challenge, which is going to be only held in my private group starting May 4th, I'm sorry, 1st, May 1st, which is coming up, it's like a few days, um, I'll send you the DM for that. I have a private Facebook group called Love Talk for Success-Minded People, and in it, 
we get into the weeds and into this type of work. We do fun challenges, fun stuff there. There are other opportunities and ways to work with me there. So feel free to check that out. Hit me with a DM if you want information on that. Much love to you guys. Happy quarantini. I don't even know what week we're up to with this hot mess. I think we're coming up on a solid, um, I think it's week seven with this disaster. But hey, hang in there. Much love to you. Health and good vibes to everybody. And I'll catch you tomorrow on the 5 o'clock quarantini. Thanks so much. And feel free to share this if you think other people in your circles can benefit from the content. Thank you. Bye.